So your shout outs for this video goes to Falco Flair, Shadow and Sloth who's on his way to 50 subscribers, Mr. Cola Roaster, we also have a massive shout out to Lydia A, Brian Galeas, we also have shout outs for Nathan Graveson and Minnesota Coaster Enthusiast. If you want a shout out in our next video then please comment them down below and I'll get them in one of tomorrow's videos. That's it for your shout outs and let's get into this fat file from Stealth at Thought Park Resort. Hello there guys, my name is Coaster Child, Donks the Born, but built for theme park news and welcome to another fact file where today, shout out to James Newton who suggested stealth at Thought Park Resort. Uh, thank you for suggesting this video and this is a fact file from Stealth at Thought Park Resort. So we're going to be discussing the history of the ride and share my thoughts about the ride for those of you who want to know more about this Amity Raceway roller coaster. But before we get started, here is how you can interact with Coast Shell YouTube channel. If you've loved this video, make sure you hit the like button below. Make sure you also comment down below your thoughts and opinions on the video topic. And also make sure you subscribe to Coast Shell YouTube channel for more. And click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Please share the channel with your friends, your family, and our social media. And make sure you also comment down below your video suggestions, which will be saved. Your shout outs, which will be saved for the next day's videos. And also make sure you send in your merchandise continuously on Instagram and Snapchat. The links for both are in the description down below and I'll save your merchandise pictures with your name and location for the next merchandise showcase video. Also make sure you get your questions in the comments down below. Use the hashtag question before or after your question and they will be saved for our 2000 subscriber Q&A. Also guys, make sure you reach that subscriber goal of 10,000 subs in the next 365 days and counting. If we do that, I will release Coaster Child merchandise on a new website as well as other projects I've got planned for the long term future. Let's get into another thrilling video. Model World was one of Thought Park's original attractions when it first opened in 1979. Originally this covered quite a large area being reduced in size over time. One of the main changes to this area occurred in 1990 when Space Station Zero was moved outside to become the Flying Fish. The majority of Model World had been removed by 2004 and the area was finally closed in 2005 to make way for the construction on the 2006 roller coaster. The models featured in the area included Bodiam Castle, the CN Tower, the Colosseum, the Colossus of Rhodes, the Eiffel Tower, Le Crac de Chevaliers, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the Matsumoto Castle, the Mausoleum at Halicarnassus, the Motherland Statue, Nelson's Column, Neuschwanstein Castle, the Pont de Garde, the Post Office Tower, the Pyramid of Cheops, the Pyramid of the Sun, Saturn V Rocket, the Sears Tower, the Shui Dragon Pagoda, the Space Shuttle, the Sphinx of Egypt, St. Basil's Cathedral, the Statue of Liberty, the Sydney Opera House, the Taj Mahal, the Temple of Artemis, the Tower of London and Thought Park's own the Dome slash Port Atlantis slash Mountbatten Pavilion. Now of course, Model World wasn't the only attraction removed for the Amity Raceway roller coaster we know and love today, because of course, they also removed the original Flying Fish. Thor Park's first roller coaster opened in 1984. It was a space themed indoor powered roller coaster built by Heinrich Mack, GmbH of Germany. Unlike later incarnations of the coaster, Space Station Zero had over the shoulder restraints rather than lap bars. Now, Space Station Zero closed at the end of 18, 1989 to be rethemed to the Flying Fish. As part of the re-theme, the coaster was relocated outside into the model world area of the park. The figure of 8 style track layout remained the same, however the train had changed. It was now designed to look like a bright green and blue fish. The restraints had also changed from over the shoulder restraints to a single lap bar for two riders sitting next to each other. In its new location, the ride was built around a very well designed landscape garden area with pools of water, fountains, waterfalls and streams running past rockeries, brushes, shrubs and trees. Over the years, as this well managed garden scenery grew around the ride, it almost became part of the ride and gave it more character. Eventually it became quite difficult to see the track layout of the flying fish as it integrated with the bush and trees so well. 
Sometimes when you were flying around some of the corners, it really did look like you may get hit by some of the greenery as it was so close. In the middle of one of the circular pieces of trap with a water pool with a custom built flying fish fountain that almost became an icon for the ride. A standard ride on the flying fish would last for three circuits of the track, however sometimes if you were lucky the operator would let the chain go around four or more times. The ride was almost popular with families and it was a great first time roller coaster and also stood up to many re-rides. At the end of 2004, the Flying Fish closed along with the rest of Moral World and the water buses to Thorpe Farm to make way for Thorpe Park's brand new launch coaster for 2006. But the Flying Fish story wasn't over. In 2007, due to popular demand, the Flying Fish returned to the park with a new look, Surfer Dude theme, and it was relocated into an area of the park between Depth Charge and Tidal Wave. Thought Park said about the return on the website, Backed by popular demand, the Flying Fish will be making its way back upstream to Thought Park in March 2007. Part of the new look was the redesigned train, repainted in yellow, red and orange, and inside the cars it had been changed also with individual seats to sit on unlike the earlier bench style seating. With this, the restraints had also been changed to individual lap bars for each rider and an on-ride photo system was also added to the ride experience. Despite this ride is still good and continues to be enjoyed by children of all ages with some of the best operator rider interaction in the theme park. But what replaced Model World and the original Flying Fish before its return in 2007? Well, that is how we come to today when we talk about the launch coaster for 2006 called Stealth. This is an intermittent accelerator roller coaster which opened on the 15th of March 2006. Now this year was a year after Rita Queen of Speed, another intermittent accelerator, opened at fellow then Two Swords theme park Alton Towers Resort. Now unlike Rita, Stealth was a normal one top hat layout with an ejector airtime hill at the end. Rita was a more outstretched layout around the rest of the formerly known Ugland area. With Stealth, the ride had a length of 1,312.3 feet, a height of 205.1 feet with a speed of 80 miles per hour, a vertical angle of 90 degrees and it included a hydraulic launch from 0 to 80 in 1.9 seconds as well as the 205.1 foot tall outside hill top path. It was designed by Ing Burro Stengel GmbH, installed by RCS, and had an arrangement of three trains with five cars per train, arranged riders two across in two rows for a total of 20 riders per hour, and is themed around the Amity Raceway, and even had WWTP Radio, a Thought Park fictional radio station, playing classic tunes from the surfer atmosphere. So that, my friends, is the history behind the past and the present of Stealth. Of course, like I said, this robot ride replaced Model World and the original Flying Fish. Uh, obviously, we've got the brand new Flying Fish, or the redesigned Flying Fish, shall we say, uh, from 2007 onwards to present day, still here now, in that new location between Depth Charge and Tidal Wave. Uh, but, of course, Model World, it kept downsizing from time to time, and then finally, along with the water buses being removed from Thorpe Park Farm, it meant that the rides were going to go. And, uh, of course, then the Flying Fish got reintroduced later on, but we kind of knew at the time that Model World was approaching its end with the reduction in size over a long period of time. Uh, so, Model World had had its time, the water bus trips had its time, uh, Flying Fish will be reintroduced later on, but of course that did anger a lot of families, I'm sure. But in its place, we got Stealth, which is a great launch coaster. Now, if you don't want to hear my thoughts on the ride, then I would skip to around a couple of minutes. I mean, there's timestamps in the description down below, so you can see when the next timestamp is to sort of give you guys my predictions for those of you who haven't experienced it yet. But quickly, I'm just going to share my thoughts. This isn't a Coast Child review, but I'm going to share quickly my thoughts in about a minute or so. So, what can I say in a minute about this ride? Well, I think one of the things I should say is it's a better launch coaster than Rita in my personal opinion. I think it's got great forces, great ejector airtime on that hill, and as you're going up that top part where you're being forced up with that hydraulic launch, you know, you're up the top part, you got a, you got a sense of breeze, uh, and then you come plummeting back down with loads of forces. So, it's a forceful ride, but it's a great forceful ride. Now, 
those of you who are now back after not hearing my review of the ride, for those of you who want to experience it for the first time and have no idea what to expect, uh, without me spoiling it, what I would say to you guys that haven't experienced it yet, that are going to experience it in the near future for the first time, is expect the unexpected because off-ride it may look fast, but on-ride it will feel a whole lot faster, trust me. Uh, if Rita felt fast, then stealth definitely does. Um, be wary of the ejector airtime hill because, of course, you are going to get some serious force on that. I can guarantee you that. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't prepare yourself for a long ride. Obviously, from looking from the layout, it is a very, very short coaster. So, I wouldn't go experiencing a Rita-type layout. I wouldn't go expecting a Rita-type layout like a... Ex like, don't go into it exp expecting the, the length of Rita to come out of this, because it's definitely shorter than Rita. I would go into this to say, right, I'm going to be forced up an airtime hill and a top hat as well uh, before that, and feel these forces. That's how I would experience it, like a quick racer, like a drag racer. Think of it like the shortest Formula 1 race circuit ever. That's how I would think of it. Um... But I would go into it with a lot of open mind because people have different opinions on things like they do with any other ride. But I would go into it with an open mind because I think you could be pleasantly surprised. I was definitely surprised when I first rode Stealth. So, And like I said in my thoughts when I talked about my review of it, for those of you who stuck around to see that earlier in the video. Um, you know, I said in that, I think Stealth is better than Rita personally. So I would go into it thinking... Give yourself an open mind. If you haven't done Rita as well, then give yourself an open mind. And then whatever stealth sets the bar, right? If you haven't done Rita yet as well, then I would use stealth's bar as a, as a, as a bar setter, really, for Rita. So that's how I would go into it, thinking-wise. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, for watching this Coast Shell Fact File from Stealth at Thought Park Resort. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And for now, guys, my name is Coast Shell. Keep on the coast of life. Make sure you stay tuned uh, in the next couple of days because we've got a fantastic theme park commercial. Try not to laugh, cringe, or whatever challenge. <laughs> I forgot now. Uh, with my twin brother, uh, Mr. Serious. Uh, he will be in the video to react to the commercials that you guys have been sensing, sending in. Uh, if you want to keep sending them in, keep sending them in, guys. Uh, we've got another day for them to come in, and then I'll get them all together into a compilation video for Mr. Serious to react to. I'm pretty sure he's off camera right now, just staring me down, because he don't like being on camera until it's just him. Uh, but for now, guys, keep on the coast life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day.